Today we're doing photography on the streets, but not your ordinary street photography. We're doing camera tossing. We're being a whole bunch of tossers today, but not in that sense that you think we're gonna throw a camera up in the air and take aerial photos, kind of, of the street. So as you can see, it's raining and just a little bit. That's because it's Typhoon signal free. Oh shit. So what we're actually gonna do is to throw the camera up so that it'll take a picture with the lens pointing downwards. But this is quite a dangerous thing because the cameras are quite expensive. So I've got a test camera to see if I can do it first. Let's try it. Because the actual camera we're using is a, a 550D from Canon. Um, not exactly weatherproof, but, but that's okay because it's just a light bit of rain today. So basically, I've got to put on a timer, but this, this is a dummy, you know, just in case you're thinking, you know, that doesn't look like a camera. I've got to put on a timer and then up. The theory is that by tossing the camera up in the air will bring a whole new perspective to the world of photography, especially when you realise how much you miss your camera when it has been smashed to pieces and you can only take photos in your imagination. Shit. Oh dear, luckily this isn't a real 550D, otherwise it would be offered up as a sold as is part bargain on the evil bay. <laughs> That hurts. Well, obviously you can't see anything because there's no point in me showing you, but um, that hurts. Momentarily got distracted by the fact that I was on a basketball court. Whoa, there you go, she's out. Bang. After a few minutes of practice, I was ready to throw a few hundred quids worth of camera in the air. But will I catch it? The only way to find out is to try it with the real deal. Now let's get the real deal out. Self timer, I think two seconds, then I'll, I'll throw it up. All right, let's give this a go. IS on. Let's focus on something at the right distance, probably, maybe. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's a bit white. That's all white. <laughs> I think it's not wide enough. I'll tell you what I need though, I need uh I need this thing. Fish eye can stay out of the way people The basketball court wasn't too exciting so I headed to another not so interesting location but with potential of losing the camera in the sea. <laughs> Just managed to grab it by the end of the lens there. I should start playing cricket, I think. Not bad, actually. Just not very good at tossing. <laughs> oh. In fact, I think... <laughs> oh, why don't we just do street photography? Bloody hell. So I moved to another location, also by the sea. Getting worse. Especially the weather as well. After a while of furious and frenzied tossing by the sea, the weather decided to have a hissy fit. Amazing, this is not weather. Oh damn. Oh man. I don't think we can do it. <laughs> I don't think this will. Oh no. I don't think we can last for much longer, especially this. It's not even working now. It's not. Oh shit! <laughs> I think we have to go. This is this is crazy. It's not hailing, but it feels like hail. See the homeless of Hong Kong. Perfect time for them. Free share and a drink. Oh! <laughs> this is like. 
windsurfing, only that we're not fucking surfing. Fucking fucking shit. Pentax is shit. Pentax is shit. So that's it. that's it kids. The conditions were worsening and then the Typhoon yeah. Signal 8 was raised, which basically means people go into the safe of your home because it's bloody windy. Or for surfers, it's surfing time. Well, we picked the former. The weather that day was completely ridiculous, so we came back today and just look. These used to be trees. Now they're just pretending to be bushes. Uh, pretentious bastards. Apparently it was quite a strong typhoon, Signal 10, which means sustained wind speeds of over 118 kilometers per hour. We were at home though, so we didn't really get to see the damage until today. Now why do I have a different camera? I've got D7000. This has got self timer obviously, but it can take a number of shots, more than one shot. I picked eight shots and you can pick the, the time in between each shot, which is nice. The D7000 seemed to be the perfect choice for this tossing. I used a cheap lens that I didn't mind breaking, but it turns out that it had oh. a bit of a problem. Shit, I've broken the lens. I mean, I haven't broken, I just caught it. Hang on, it's not focusing. Oh, it's because the focusing ring doesn't move. They don't buy cheap Nikon lenses. They're shit. That's completely the wrong focus for anything. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh, that's not supposed to do that, is it? Oh. What? That is unbelievable. And it's not even broken by the water. The rain. It's... Do you think we can fix it? <laughs> Great. What other camera do I have? A Lox Olympus EP1. <laughs> it actually still works. Just not when it's put together. But that's okay, because I have another camera. 5D Mark III. Yeah. Oh, so that's funny, isn't it? So we started off with 550D, bang, that didn't work. D7000, then the lens snapped. So there's only one way to go, and it's to go um, a little bit more expensive, progressively more expensive. We've got the 5D Mark III and the 24mm f2.8 Prime. So let's chuck this up, and hopefully this doesn't break or, you know, somehow fail, because we'll have to go to Hasselblad next. But the time there's no you can't shoot more than one frame maybe about that distance <laughs> Ooh, oh that's the blue sky with only one shot being taken each time i have to keep tossing over and over again to get that shot it's it's not wide enough even though it's 24 millimeter that's it's quite wide already yeah? but i can't really I'm not going to throw that high because I'm going to drop it. <laughs> you know, I'll be honest. There you go, Bosch fisheye converter, which I've used for the Nikon and the previous Canon. Luckily, it fits on this 58 millimeter thread. So there you go. This is really wide. This is like, it's just a circle there. Unless you're a massive tosser and are willing to toss it up high in the air, then it's probably best to get an ultra wide or fisheye lens. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, I nearly dropped it there. What a brilliant way of taking self-portraits. Why didn't I think of this before? Mind you, with a fish eye, you could just do it like that. <laughs> That's lovely. It's all a bit surreal, really. The only thing we need now is a lobster telephone to make it perfect. 
This is definitely very unconventional, but I guess that's what makes it interesting. The nervous feeling of trying to catch the thing and trying to toss it in the air so that you get the photo that you want. Sorry for the bad language, but that was quite scary. A bit boring when it's just myself. When you two come in, where are you going, Lambie? That's not gonna help. <laughs> Better than nothing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Almost that I wasn't in it. Probably not a kind of photography for everyone, but it's quite an interesting point of view. Almost like a bird's eye point of view. Well, a bird that is doing a low fly swoop to dash your head with its poo pebbles. But the important part is that you know how to catch it and are confident or foolish enough to believe you can keep catching it, especially as it's a case of trial and error. It does seem like more of a sport than photography, but at least you can get some interesting looking photos. Just don't use the 5D Mark III.